Hey everyone, Daniel here, and in this video I'm going to be walking you through the basics of Quixel Mixer so you can get started fast while still having a solid foundation of the knowledge involved. Quixel Mixer shares some features with Substance by Algorithmic, except it's extremely helpful when it comes to using it with Megascans and Unreal Engine. Currently, Mixer is completely free, even for non-subscribers, so it's a great time to try it out. To download Quixel Mixer, go to quixel.com slash mixer, and you can click this button that says download mixer free. Once you've downloaded the installer, run through it to install Quixel Mixer onto your machine. Upon opening the new program, you'll need to create a new project by clicking this plus icon, I'll call mine testing, and then create a new mix by clicking this button up here. I will also call this test mix. Now you can choose your PBR workflow, I'll stick with specular, and your working resolution, which these can be changed later. When you're ready, click OK, and now your project will be open. Now a couple of things that you'll need to set before you get started is to go up to Edit and Preferences, and now you'll need to choose where you want your Mixer files to be stored, as well as where your local library of Megascans assets is. If you are a user of Megascans, either for Unreal Engine or for any other application, you'll need to browse to wherever your library of downloaded assets is. Once you've got all of that sorted out, click Save, and you're ready to get started. As far as the windows that you can see here, there's a viewport window where you can see what you're working on, a local library that contains all of the Megascans assets that you've downloaded, an online library where you can choose any of the assets in the Megascans library as long as you sign in, a layers window that displays all of the layers in the scene, a display window where you can change settings that have to do with the display, performance for performance settings, and an export window where you can export whatever you've been working on. In order to access the online assets, you'll need to sign in with your Megascans account. Now, since I'm an Unreal developer, I can sign in with Epic Games, and since unlimited free Megascans assets are available to Unreal developers, I now have infinite points on my balance and can download whatever I want. Let's go over the different kinds of layers that exist in Mixer. Now, the first one that will always be in your project is a plane. This is what you're looking at right now, and it's just a base geometry. So you can choose the size of this plane. I could make it 10 by 10 meters, if that's how large of a mix I was making, or I could make it one by one, if I wanted this to be much smaller. And you can also choose the working resolution to choose whether you'd like it to be 4K or 8K. That's experimental, so be careful with using 8K. I'm gonna be sticking with 2K resolution and a two by two meter plane for this project right here, but we may work with a different size later in the video. The first kind of layer is a surface layer. Now this could be a material or it could be any kind of surface that you import. So to add a surface layer, click right here and by default you'll be sent to your local library. But you can also go to the online library to add in a material that you don't yet have access to. I'll start with these wet sand footprints. Let's go over how to navigate in this window. To scroll in and out, you're gonna scroll your mouse wheel. To pan side to side, hold down the mouse wheel. And to rotate around, hold alt and left click and drag. You can also zoom in and out by alt right clicking and dragging. Now let's go over some of the settings in here. The height intensity is one of the most important ones and it's what tells the renderer how you want the displacement to be displayed. So the high frequency is gonna look at the high details on whatever it is that you are displacing and it will increase it or decrease it depending on what you set this to. The low frequency does the same except for the lower points in the data. So you can use this to add a lot of depth but sometimes it'll look a little weird in the silhouette if you do it too much. And those are some of the basic settings for the surface materials. Now let's move on to this next one, the decal layer. So if I add this, I can add any given decal to my scene. And I would go online perhaps to search for decals. And once you find one that you would like to use, you can select it in the online tab, choose download, and once it is downloaded, you can easily click it and drag it into the scene over whatever you'd like it to be placed on. Already this is looking pretty cool. So I can change a lot of settings now. I can choose whether it is blending from above, from below, or opacity masked, which is what I'm going to be using. I can choose the threshold, which chooses where it's going to end up. The radius, 
that affects how it blends with the materials around it. You can make it slightly transparent with this opacity slider. Now, wrap to base is an interesting one. This is going to make it mesh perfectly with the contours of the sand as long as you're placing it on sand. And if I were to remove this, it would become completely flat, but then we would have some of this drop off right on the edge. And so we're gonna have to find ways to deal with that if that's what we end up doing. So I don't mind a little wrap to base. So that's what I'm going to have it at right now. Now you can also choose to remove the details of the base. So I think the best way to learn about this one is just to see it in action. So right now it's at seven, which is max base detail removal. Now, if I went to zero, this is what we have now. And you can see that the grains of sand, the roughness textures of the grains of sand, that is now carrying over onto the manhole, as well as the footprints, it seems. So for something like a manhole, which wouldn't receive footprints since this appears to be a concrete and metal, you'd want to remove the base details as much as possible because that is what's going to distinguish it from the surroundings. You can also adjust the high frequency and low frequency of decals as well to make it jut out even further. Now, if you feel like somehow you've ruined the settings for your decal, what you can always do is click on this reset values and it will set right back to where it was. Remember, you can choose where the manhole will be placed just by sliding the offset. You can also rotate and with decals, you can rotate on an individual degree basis. It doesn't have to be 90 degrees at a time because these are like stickers that are being slapped on as opposed to base materials that can only be rotated a certain amount. You can also scale them up or down if you feel that they need to be larger or smaller. If you wanted a decal to be tiled, you could allow tiling to occur by checking tile X or tile Y or both of them. And you can choose how many repetitions you want for each axis. Now the next kind of layer is a solid layer. Now it's just going to be a solid color and something that I recommend for all of your projects is that you keep a solid layer at the very bottom of each mix and you can rename it by double clicking on it, and rename it into a base layer. And then you can build all of your materials on top of that. And now we have more options for each of the materials above, such as the sand, which we can now choose to blend from above or from below. I'm going to choose from above and now we can mess with the threshold like so and with the manhole we can choose to adjust the threshold with this as well in response to the movement we made with the sand. This just ensures that we have maximum custom ability as far as all of the other materials besides the base layer. Now let's move on to one of my favorite layers, the liquid layer. This is going to add a solid liquid plane to whatever you're working on. And you can place it at any given height. And now I can fill the footprints with water or something similar to that. And it gives off an incredibly cool effect that I really, really enjoy. So you can edit much about this, such as the threshold, which you've already seen used, the radius. And again, notice how it is seeping in as I increase the radius. I would, exp I would definitely suggest experimenting with radius yourself to truly learn about how it all works. You've got the detail, you've got the surface and the depth, and then you have moist, and this is one of the more important ones. So the threshold with moist is exactly what it sounds like. It's going to bring moisture to everything around it. So now it looks like mud, which is a cool effect on its own. I'm going to keep the moisture pretty low though. I want this to look like a beach with a manhole, a mysterious one. You can also choose the radius for the moisture. If you ever lose your place with these moisture settings or you can't figure out how to get them back to default because for some reason they don't have a return to default settings next to this, you can always just add another liquid layer which will contain the default settings and you can just copy them over. Remember, you can change the diffuse color of the water as well. However, the default color for this water works really, really well. Now, the next layer is very interesting. It's a noise layer, and it's going to do some pretty interesting things to your scene. As you can see, it seems to add curvature to the entire plane, including the manhole, which we don't want that. So I'm going to bring the manhole above the noise, 
so that it is overlaid on top of that. And as you can see, that seems to work out pretty well. Now let's talk about this noise. There's lots and lots of settings in here that you can mess with. One of them, the amplitude is going to change how extreme the effect is. The frequency has to do with increasing the number of bumps per area. As you can see, and a lot of this is gonna take some experimentation to learn all of the different settings. Octaves is going to increase the detail of this noise. Gives it a really crusty look. You'd, you could increase it all the way and then uh, decrease the frequency. And what that will have is just a rocky sand dry effect. Because now this sand looks pretty dry compared to how it did like this. So I'm just going to use it to create a bit of a rolling hill effect on this area. I'm also going to bring up the manhole a bit by adjusting the threshold. And you may start to notice something like this, which is easily fixable. All you need to do is work with the radius a little bit, maybe bring it down just a little bit more. Now the only concern here is that I don't want anything to come over the manhole too much and distract from that. So if I were to increase the amplitude so much that you have this giant lip, which clearly does not look very good, that would be a big problem. So don't bring the amplitude up that much. Something like this is absolutely acceptable. Just keep playing with the settings until you see something that you really like, and then you can stick with that. So I'm gonna mess with the noise just a bit more on this. And well, that's that. And if you do end up having any big problems, you can always offset the texture so that there's no parts that are going to affect it too much. You probably don't want footprints going under this want it to seem like it was installed beforehand. So try to minimize that as much as you can. You always want to be thinking about the story of the material that you're making. This looks pretty good to me. This looks very good. And remember, on the flip side of that, you can always adjust the placement of the manhole itself. After that, there is only one more layer, and that is the paint layer. Now, with painting, you can do a whole lot of things. You can import an image, you can draw on it. There's so much that you can do. And you'll get this brush interface with all these kinds of different brushes. You'll start out with this brush and you can edit the curve with these settings right here. And then you can begin to draw displacement on. I'm gonna just click on the diffuse and now I can just draw onto the diffuse itself. Remember you can adjust the diffuse color on this side this time. So if it was graffiti, we could turn it light blue, hit apply, and for this we probably want a smaller brush size so you can change the brush settings up here. Not that small. You could draw a big old letter in here. And then you can erase with the eraser tool very simply. Very nice. Now if you were doing graffiti, I would probably change the opacity downwards a little bit because you'd want color to show through because spray paint usually fades over time. Remember, remembering story as you're creating is very important. As you can see, as you draw over certain parts, again, it'll become brighter and that is realistic. If you are doing spray paint, remember that as you spray over certain parts, it, it has the same effect because you're adding more layers of paint onto the original stroke. If you want to learn about graffiti, I would go on Google and find some reference images for it. And also remember that the effect is going to bleed a little bit, so turn the opacity way down and get a bigger brush, and you can start bleeding it to other parts of the mesh. And that is one way that you can use the paint layer. Another way is to put textures, mess with the gloss. Say you wanted one specific streak to be extremely glossy, you could take this brush, turn the gloss white, apply, start drawing on this one spot. And now if you look at it in the sunlight, you can see that it is much more glossy just by painting on it. So I probably wouldn't make it that opaque and you can always erase. But it's as if you can draw moisture onto the surface and it's a very helpful thing. So I'm gonna turn the opacity down. I can just start clicking and 
it's like I'm adding little spots of irregularity. And it just adds just a small, that small touch, but it could be worth a whole lot to your scene. So those are the basics of Quixel Mixer for complete beginners. If this video helps you out, consider leaving a like and subscribing to this channel for more content similar to this. And with that, have fun creating, and I hope you have an excellent day.